If you made it to this video, you've probably already seen one of these energy-free water pump videos that seem to be all over YouTube right now. Here's one that has 730,000 views. Here's another one, 2.5 million views. Here's another one for an aquarium, uh, 5.7 million views two months ago. And today we're going to do a scientific experiment to show whether this works or really doesn't work. Many of these videos don't seem to have many words to them. They just show you a picture of how the thing is put together, and then they show you like a, about a 10-second clip of the water coming out of it. But more importantly, once the water starts coming out, does it keep going, or does this thing go dry after a little bit of time of running? So on this video, we're going to show you the science behind this and exactly what it takes to make it work, or in the case of not work, we're going to show you why. Let's first apply a little bit of logic. If you're just doing a siphon where you have one body of water that's elevated higher than a second body or a container, then certainly if you just fill an ordinary hose and you bring it down below this level of the fluid, it'll start siphoning the water or fluid out of that container and down to the lower level. This is done because the gravity in the hose is greater on the lower side than it is on the higher side. With wherever the peak being, say right there, you have less weight on this side than what you would have on this side so the fluid is obviously going to flow towards the heavier side. That would almost be the same in this example right here. If this was a pulley and this was a five pound weight and this was a 10 pound weight, then you would obviously know that the five pound weight would go up towards the pulley and the 10 pound weight would go down. Likewise, when looking at this experiment, you would conclude that the highest point of elevation being right here, with all the fluid going down this suction side, you would think would be a lot lighter then all the fluid on this side here when you have your container completely full. And you would think almost like in the same example of the pulley that the heavier side would pull the fluid towards it. In that case, logically, you would look at this and you'd think, well, that would just suck the water up the suction side. And since you have so much weight of this container, the fluid weight of the container, it would naturally just flow right out the discharge side. So let's get started. We'll put one of these together real quick. Hey, we'll be back in a little over 60 seconds and we're going to pause real quick to see if you need any eternal repair. You might say, eternal repair? What's that? Well, hey, consider your whole life and all your life. Have you ever told a lie before? I have and I'm sure you have too. We all have. Also consider, have you ever stolen something even no matter how small it was? I'm sure you have and I have too. The whole point of where I'm going with this is those two rules, lying and stealing, those are two of the Ten Commandments in the Bible for which define what sin is. So if you've broken even one of those rules, no matter how small it was, that means you've sinned, and we all have. The punishment for sin is going to hell, or eternal separation from God. The good news is Jesus Christ came to this earth. He didn't lie. He didn't steal. He didn't do all these crazy stuff that you and I have done. He was totally without sin. He was sacrificed on the cross for my personal sin and yours. He went to the grave. Three days later, he defeated death, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross was he was taking the punishment for your sin and for my sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was, what he did, you submit to him as your Lord, and you repent. And when you do that, you can have eternal habitation with Jesus and the rest of the saints for eternity in heaven. You might be saying to yourself, hey, I'm a good person. Surely God wouldn't send me to hell for all the nice things I've done for people. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says, by grace you can save through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man or woman should boast. There is no amount of good work you can do to earn your righteousness before God. Only faith and trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. Hey, let's get back to our video, and I'll have a little more information on the eternal portion of this at the end of the video. The first assumption you'll have to do if you're going to make one of these is you have to have a tank that has solid walls on it. So one of these videos where they try to make one out of one of these drinking bottles, and if it's got the flexible sides on it, this will never work because as the water comes out of it, it'll just collapse the bottle rather than put a vacuum on the thing to be able to keep returning new water into the bottle. Certainly in the videos, they use steel drums, which have no flex to them either. So we've chosen this very hard-sided plastic bottle. You can see this bottle is a very firm-sided bottle. Let's go ahead and melt a hole in the side of it for our discharge soldering gun. Go ahead and make the hole in the side of this thing. This is working very nicely. And then we'll put our second hole top edge of this thing. Now we'll take the hot glue gun. We'll go ahead and put plenty of hot glue around this thing to make sure it's very well sealed. One of the concepts behind what it would take to make this thing work is you can have no air leaks where air could enter into this closed system. 
Okay, you'll notice on our first attempt at doing this, we actually have a leak here on this upper hose where it goes into the bottle. Take a little bit of sandpaper, and we'll go and rough up this bottle. So like we said before, if there's any air leaks in the system, then it's doing nothing other than just draining the water out of the bottle. Okay, let's do a lot better job on sealing this up this time. Set it up here. Okay, let's see what happens here first. Okay, basically nothing is happening right now. There's no movement in the suction side. There's no movement in the discharge side. So let's do another experiment. We'll take the garden hose and we'll see if we can put some pressure water pressure on the suction side to see if we could actually just get the thing started flowing. See, we got the water going here. So this is the suction side of this thing. I'm going to hold it up to this water to get this thing moving. You'll, as I put the water onto the suction side of this thing, you'll see these air bubbles. They'll start going up. And then I'll put the suction side right back down in our pond of water and see if it keeps moving. Okay, so here we go. Okay, you can see it's moving really fast right now. You know, the water is coming out the bottom there. So now let's just drop it back down and see if it keeps moving. Okay, we're actually getting a backwards flow off of the discharge side. It's bubbling up. So now let's go ahead and try it and we'll turn the discharge side up like this so that it can't seem to get that back flow started. And we'll see if it can make it work at that point. You'll notice at this point, the whole thing is just actually siphoning backwards. You'll see all these bubbles start going back the direction it's supposed to be going. Okay, you can see the water is coming out down there at the bottom. The whole thing is working perfectly. I'm going to put this back down into the water, and then I'm going to turn the discharge side up so the air bubbles can't get through it. Okay, and there's our... Okay. We basically have nothing happening at all. <coughs> Let's try it again. We'll get all the water out of the head on this thing so that the bottle is completely full and see if that makes a difference. Here's another try. We got the bottle completely full. I'm going to pull it out of the water and I'm going to tip the discharge hose upward a little bit so it can't back suck the air into the bottle. There we go. Let's turn this upward. Completely full bottle, absolutely nothing. No movement at all. So now let's go ahead and hook the hose back up to the suction side. We'll get it flowing and see if it keeps flowing. So here's our suction hose. Let's put it right there to that stream of water. And now you see, now the water's coming out of our thing. So now I'm gonna take it away, put it back in the water, see if it keeps moving. Actually, we're getting a suction on the discharge side. It's not doing anything. Could we go in the wrong direction as it's siphoning the water back out of the bottle? And it's going to siphon it out all the way down to the bottom edge of the input hose. And once it reaches that air bubble there, that's when it's going to stop. to complete stop again. I think we can conclude at this point that this whole thing is a sham and there's no scientific way that this could possibly work. Certainly a siphon, you can siphon from a higher level of body of water to a lower level body of water. And whether you go through a tank or just use a straight hose makes no difference. Most of your videos out there on the free energy water pumps are being done by this site called Learn for Life. And you say to yourself, why would they go to this much effort to put all these videos out there when this thing really doesn't work? Well, let's answer that and take a look. Here's a video that they just put out three days ago. And you can see it has 17,000 views in three days. Here's another one that was put out a week ago, 24,000. Here's another one two weeks ago, 36,000. Here's one that's three weeks ago, 81,000. Here's another one that's a month ago, 53,000. And these are all the newer videos. So let's go on down their site just a little bit and take a look at some of their older videos. As you can see, they have quite a few videos of exactly the same thing going on here. 
here's one, 665,000 views in six months. So why would they go to all this trouble to put these out there when this thing really doesn't work? The answer is, think about all the advertising money YouTube is probably paying them for running these videos and has such a high viewership. The easy part is that this video having 729,000 some odd views and look at the percentage of likes. 7,600 people liked it, 537 didn't like it. And I think what's happening here is people watch this and then they don't even realize that it doesn't work and they think it's a great idea and so they hit the like button and maybe go try it and then later find out it doesn't work. Hey, as far as the eternal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure you know who God is, I encourage you to just to pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, if you were real and you were out there, I pray you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that prayer, he's going to answer it and you will know he is real. At the point you know he is real and you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is so simple. All you have to do is just pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God. You took the price for my personal sin on the cross. I surrender my will to your will as Lord of my life. I repent of my sin. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me into your eternal habitation. That's just how simple it is. But the catch is that just saying those words won't do anything for you, only unless the heart believes the words that you're speaking. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. Hey, if you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot more information about your walk with Jesus Christ. That's eternalrepair.com. Thanks for watching.